sun is going to incubate? <laughs> well, you can't believe everything you read, but the sun could incubate next to flu epidemic. I was looking for sunspots, so I call the news. I'd love it if we could actually get this camera to, to be in focus. It would be so nice. Oh, I believe you'll focus. Oh no, do you have sun do you have sunspots? <laughs> Is that the problem? I forget the domain is not. It's genetic. Alright, well, let's see. We'll start in just a little bit here. Uh, I'd want to wait for John at least, because he's got Chris to take notes like him. <laughs> So sorry to the people watching at home that you're going to sit and watch us do nothing for a little bit, but we're trying to be fair to everybody. Researching sunspot training. Maybe that's our problem. Yeah, more cream. Maybe. Uh, Did you have to solder the display on? Some better propagation. Yeah. There's, I think, uh, I don't know, ten or twelve. Solder connections. It's not very much. They probably took it off. But the reason they do that is if it's a kit, the VAT doesn't apply. The value added tax. Right. You got an SOL, you have SOL frequency. I'm not sure that's a good thing. Oh, like, <laughs> well, you, you do a master calibration, but if you want to do a calibration at the end of a piece of feed line, uh -huh. you can do it. So you can actually measure exactly. Yeah, you can do it. Oh, without losing that calibration? No, it's just that uh, it's it called SOL. So I just figured it's for SWRs that aren't good. Can you tell you where the water is in your coax? Oh, nice. They use a J factor as opposed to the X factor for the reactants on this. No, it looks pretty good. The manual is nice. Mike, can you stand more power in the water goes away? <laughs> <laughs> oh, on the coax? The steam explosion. Yeah. Just shoots out of the elements. And the <laughs> Instead of letting the smoke out, you let the steam out. This actually seems more um, advanced. It doesn't seem quite as user friendly. I'll be interested to poke around on it. That has an R, a BNC on the end? I'm sorry? It has a BNC on the end? BNC connector. Oh, it is BNC. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah. yeah it's a seven. Like I said, we're going to wait and uh, we'll be no. rolling here soon. Just waiting for the more people to come. Yes. Change is our to the sun, solar cycle 21. Is a solar cycle like a Harley? <laughs> uh, it's similar. It's similar to that. It doesn't use as much fuel. It's a, a perpetual motorcycle, perpetual motion motorcycle. A fact just out of my Yeah. It's cheaper. It's cheaper to buy those to get the foam for your good good boxes. All right. Let's see here.
here usually we end up in free tape measure or something along with it. Is the time zone is the weakest in some of the so we call that. Which one? So 24. 24. That, that the last one was weak. I didn't know. It was that was the one before before last. last. I don't remember that. Right in front right. of you. Uh, Dennis, right behind your jacket, there's a sign. Uh, 20, we're on 25 now, right? There's some debate. Well, we just moved in at 26 or 25. 25 is what come part of it. It is. I think we're in 25 now, according to uh, what we've seen. So, you know what I'll do here is uh, let me look at something real quick. Since we're waiting, I think what we'll do is this. We'll, uh, okay, so here's what we'll do. Let's go to our website here. And I believe there's a new video. Uh, Find your name. Space weather this week is getting very interesting. We're coming down from some fast wind that from a collapsing coral hole that well as expected kind of underwhelmed us. We didn't make storm conditions. As a matter of fact, we hardly made active conditions, but we did get some decent aurora show, especially at high latitudes over the last couple days. Now that storm is beginning to wane and it's left the Earth shield pretty rattled, which means that the Earth shield is very susceptible to any more storms. And guess what? What comes next? Well, we had a solar storm launch back on November 30th from the south part of the disk, and it looks like the main bulk of it is going to go south of Earth, but the northernmost tip might actually graze Earth, and it could be enough of a disturbance to bump us back up to active conditions, but even a tiny chance of storm conditions. Most likely not, but there is a chance, especially because the Earth shield is already rattled. So this is good news for you aurora photographers who missed out on this last storm. For you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, it's going to look like it's going to be a bumpy ride here for the next couple days. But at least it'll give you some interesting propagation because, as you can see, the sun is still spotless. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that solar storm that was launched back on November 30th. Now, the front part of the storm will hopefully be a grazing passage because most of it is going southward of us, but the back end of the storm actually looks like it might give us a bigger hit. So at high latitudes, no one's expecting storming conditions. As a matter of fact, about a 45% chance of a major storm. At mid-latitudes, we're only expecting active conditions, but we've got about a 20% chance of a minor storm. And these conditions could easily linger into the 6th and possibly into the 7th before things quiet down simply because the Earth shield is already so rattled from the previous solar storm that, you know, it was a bit of a fizzle, but nonetheless, it still agitated the Earth enough that we could easily bump back up to uh, some decent activity levels here. So you were warned photographers, hey, don't give up hope, especially at mid-latitudes. There could be a chance yet, so keep your batteries charged. And then as things begin to settle down, we're going to have another coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone, but it probably won't bump us up more than just like these unsettled conditions that we've been seeing. Switching to your solar flare and look at that wonderful solar up up over the coming week. As I mentioned before, we have a spotless sun right now, so everything is in the green when it comes to solar flares. We have no risk of radio blackouts. So you GPS users, especially on Earth's day side, you should be loving life. Your GPS reception should look pretty good. Now, as far as you amateur radio operators are concerned, well, spotless sun usually is bad. We have solar flux that's back in the 60s, which means poor radio propagation 
location, but we do have these little minor disturbances from these solar storms. It's keeping us right around unsettled conditions. And as that continues, that could actually boost propagation for you. So don't let these numbers fool you. You might actually get some decent propagation even on our space side. Now, because we are getting it near a uh, solar minimum, the cosmic ray penetration is a bit more than it would normally be. So you frequent flyers, and this includes you air crew who are flying at high altitudes and high latitudes and flying over 800 hours annually. You are at the moderate risk for radiation dose, and this does include you prenatal passengers. So please keep this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week has definitely gotten interesting. Even though we're coming down from a solar storm that, well, kind of underwhelmed and fizzled a little bit, we have a chance for another. The sun launched a solar storm that's mostly going to go south of Earth, but the northernmost tip can actually graze Earth, and we are hoping that it'll hit us right around the fourth end of the fifth, and it could bump us back up to active conditions. So your war photographers, definitely keep your batteries charged, at, especially you guys at high latitudes. Now mid latitudes, it may be another teaser here where you get a tiny bit sporadically here and there, but we're going to keep our fingers crossed. Now amateur radio operators and shortwave responders, well, these mini solar storms, by keeping everything unsettled, that actually helps propagation a bit. Now this propagation may be a bit more sporadic than you're used to, especially on Earth's day side. But at least it'll give you propagation that is a little bit better than what the solar flux numbers say right now, which is that it should be completely dismal. So let's hope that continues for a bit and gives you some decent propagation. And now for you GPS operators, well, as long as you stay away from the dawn dust terminators and away from Aurora during these solar storms, your reception should look pretty nice. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching. Lower dismal. <laughs> Medium dismal. <laughs> Does she do that weekly? Uh, they come out sporadically. You never know when it's, it's like going to. Yeah, you, you never know when it's going to come out. This is a preview. <laughs> she was doing a live broadcast there. She does do live stuff. Yeah, once in a while. That's kind of new for her. She just started doing that actually. Who are they? Who are they? You mean who, who sponsors she? that? She does it herself. It's her own channel. Uh, but she works for NOAA and she's okay. like the contracted space weather woman for the government, basically, and other industries that need to know, like power companies and stuff like that, who need to know that kind of information because she gives them warnings when, you know, they might have a, a solar flare that'll take out the grid or something. Yeah, I didn't recognize the logo or anything like that. Yeah. No, you won't. It's her own personal oh. page that she runs. So uh, that's what that logo was. It said SW for space weather, I think. SWPC for official. Yeah, so forecast or something like that. I'm not sure. And that's new. She never used to have that there. We have a massive promo hole that is. Let's see, so there it is on the bottom. Well, I'll tell you what, you're in a bug round, but I couldn't get them. There was a GW3 call-up for 180. SWW, space weather, something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the vans have been pretty good, actually. I was here in New Zealand and, uh, I don't know, 20 Yeah, to look at her, uh, to look at her report, you would swear that the uh, flux level is so low that we have 80, but that's a little bit. Yeah, but. I think we're there every week. I would hear 8 today, you know, 180, that's 4. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yesterday was pretty loud, yesterday, not today. Yesterday, you were hearing what pretty loud? The H7? Uh, the AW8 back in Abraham, Michigan, and all that. Okay. On 80. And I heard a guy at work calling somebody. It's new or on 80 the other day, I see that in there, 100 miles. So the band's definitely open pretty much all day. Yeah, that's right. Right before we talked, you said that you were working uh, somebody back east, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, I worked, uh, I worked W, or no, what was it? H7 slant bar 
something oh, ROF. I, oh, I work here. Yeah, that good, I got them on 80. Like, yeah. Like, whatever data it was. So what was that? That was. 80 on the bus. It wasn't Columbia. It was some island down yeah, there. Where? Is that the big pileup I hear on the board? Yes. Before? Yeah. It's the pileup that's going I can't on. Do, I can't do reset. I got a thick call. Uh, shoot, I can't remember what his call is, but he's he's down there in this in the uh, Caribbean. Uh, or he's either in the Caribbean or one of the islands, or you know, not islands, uh, South America, one of the countries. I can't remember what it is. Not Argentina. Uh, I think it's more north. Like, um, <clears throat> I thought it was Colombia. Colombia right? or what you other one up there? Well, here's what we can do. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. I can go here to QRZ and type in H7 and it'll probably be something. No need to knock. Come on in. Oh, is it? Because you're late. If you're late, that's it. Uh, let's see. Eight seven has an off the cap. Seven. Let's see if it comes up with anything here. Just to get an idea, it just pop up. Uh, my, my, uh, what is it? Nicaragua. Oh, yeah. Okay. Nicaragua. All right. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's not bad. Yeah. Now, what I was gonna say, you work Nicaragua on, uh, on. Uh, Talk to me? Yeah, you worked him on 80. Yeah. And I worked him. Uh, and I worked him. I worked him on uh, 15. Yeah. Wow. Really? Yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go up to 15 and see what's going on up there because nothing's been on for so long. So uh, yeah, I decided, you know what? Let's uh, let's see what's going on on 15. And uh, sure enough, there was there was a lot of people. I mean. Uh, it was probably about two, three o'clock in the afternoon. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Japan, Japan was booming in. Oh, that's who. That's who. I was not sure why. James. Yeah. Japan was booming in. Uh, South America. Some South America was there. Nicaragua, obviously. Um, and then I had like two or three Cusos with guys in uh, in the East Coast on fifteen. I mean, it was wasn't quite like. You know, in the 90s, when it wasn't quite like the 90s where the vans were super busy, but uh, I was able to call CQ and get somebody to answer me in, you know, less than 20 minutes. That's not bad. Actually, what I do is I keep my radio tuned to like 21036, and I figure someone's going to be calling CQ, and I'll grab them when they're calling CQ. Yeah. And uh, sure enough, I heard two or three, and then I heard the VX station. Uh, oddly, though, I did not see uh, DX Summit. There were there wasn't like a whole stack of spots, hmm. you know. So he wasn't being spotted so maybe much. Maybe should just open it up. You just fire it up. Uh, cool. Yeah, maybe that's possible. I think I waited about ten minutes before I gave him a call. And uh, he was split. What did how? What was his split for you? Oh, I didn't. Uh, let's see. Uh, I didn't remember. They're about, about one. It's about two up. Yeah. See, I think I got him at point eight or one. It was real close to it's his. Funny home. operator. You didn't know if he really came back. He would say five. He never gave you right. Call. So you had to kind of guess. Yeah. Well, I got the call back to me, uh, but I noticed that he didn't sign very often. Right, yeah. He was calling CQ, but he would sign like every 15 or 20 15 minutes. minutes yeah. yeah, it wasn't very frequent at all. So I think he just got caught up in the moment and uh, didn't didn't uh, get uh, get to set, send him his call. What is that? Do you want to sign you? Did you do that? Right? <clears throat> oh. Well, I think I gave it to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> send it around again. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you know what? Uh, yeah. You didn't get it right. You know what? Just pass that around to Dave again. Just 
So, anywho, um, it was good to be able to work some 15 after so long. You know, I had thought 15 was a dead band. But... Oh, well, it's always open on the contest. Oddly enough, thank you very much. I think he's going to believe that. Oh, on 10? Yeah. Okay. You can always hear them. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Um, so let's see here. Uh, you know what? Because I forget every single week or every single month. I'm just going to give the, the uh, treasury report. Oh. And then we can discuss. Uh, yeah, you know what? Let's first hear from Chris, and he'll give us a recap of last yeah, month. Be my, my last one here. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> uh, good one, Chris. Let <laughs> me write read this crap here. All right, we had uh, last month. We had a total of. You can go through the whole uh, recap of last month if you want to do that. All right. Well, actually, we had a guest last month, and she had no idea what she, what she was getting herself into. So Mike, uh, it's an MQL, and Carol told her what the purpose of the club was, and amateur radio in general, and AWRL. We got the bug round up. We might have to read away AWRL membership. Mike and MQM gave us a talk on the SDR chart and the RTL SDR Dongo broadband receiver. Uh, Mike, they did no two children in 1960 SRS Queen and Key. It was made by Leonard uh, Peterson Company. Uh, they started in the 1900s, early, and they picked it for around 1960. Very nice key. And great uh, IT and T. Anyway, uh, let's see what else is going on here. Mike uh, went through a process of uh, donation for the club. He bought some t shirts uh, that had uh, 1940 style Vinoplex uh, Wind Racer uh, pictures on it. And uh, the word, I feel the need for speed. You still have to take drugs to do that. Anyway, oh, that's just the free the, the USB uh, light, the USB uh, LED light, yeah, that's pretty cool. And a MFJ code reader, uh, the model of 461, these are gifts for the club. Anyway, uh, trader report uh, went down between $15.42 on uh, the Wells uh, Fargo. <coughs> the PayPal was uh, down to $7.17. $5,222.59. Okay, on the air, we had uh, four, four nets in December, 27 seconds all together, on line was six. And let me tell you how many showed up last night. I'm going to cut the right down. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, ten members and one guest. So that's the Thank you very much, Chris. All right, so, uh, what's that? Oh, year. Are you kidding? That's a lifetime position. Did we not vote for Chris? In very very well. All, favor, favor, all in favor of Chris being lifetime secretary say aye. 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 First vote gets Oh, I'm sorry. I nominate Chris for lifetime membership. Uh, do I hear a second? All right, second. All in favor? Aye. Say aye. Aye. Can we double the salary? <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. I, yeah, that's a bit much. <laughs> Good much. We'll take donations. Yeah, uh, we're gonna do that. Put them in that imaginary you hat. Over there and pass that imaginary hat around. Whatever. Whatever. Whatever comes back is it. It's it. Yeah, that we can do. I, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, all right, so uh, Chris gave us the report, and it included, of course, the um, 
It included, of course, the uh, Treasury report. And um, it looks like we're only a few dollars higher than that. Looks like we had uh, another $40 on top, which means two, two members joined. Oh, remember so that would be what the forty dollars is to of the twenty dollar memberships because the current total is now sixty two uh fifty two sixty uh, fifty two sixty two seventy seven so it yep. went up uh for about close four. For yeah close enough for government work I'll just add twenty and I'll add them later okay um now I have the uh list of new members I don't know where it went but uh, there were the two members. And uh, if you are a member of this club, you have probably received an email from the administrator, whoever that guy is. He's constantly sending emails. Who's that guy? And uh, he sent an email announcing the members. And if you go to the uh, website, of course, <clears throat> and click on, uh, let's see here, and All right, uh, if you click on members, then it brings up the members page. And on the members page, of course, you can see everybody's, uh, everybody's call and name listed. And you'll notice we, uh, we have 20 in each row, so 2, 4, 6, E, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? So 66. I thought we were at 68. Uh, so we can only have 14 more members, looks like. Yeah, after that, that's it. <laughs> we have to start uh, we, we start kicking people out. <coughs> and it looks like uh, we'll start kicking you out first, or no, who is it going to be? Uh, I guess it's going to be Chris. He's near, near the top of the list. We can get rid of him. No, he would like that. But no, we're not going to do that. Um, yeah, so uh, I believe WA6JJM, Mike, <coughs> has been joining us on our nets. Yeah. So good to have Mike on the net. Uh, and let's see, who's the other one? Uh, who was it that joined? It was uh, W6MRV yeah. in Green Valley. Yeah. Is that Green Valley? For Fun Valley. Right. No, Green Valley. Uh, no, it's not Green Valley. It's Garden. 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 There you go. You did it again. I know. <laughs> I, I never did it again. I changed that email. So you like Green Valley, there's a Green Valley road in almost every county. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Arizona, I know. Yeah. So Garden Valley, uh, W6MRD, that's David. I believe those are the two newest members. Sorry if I'm getting it wrong, uh, but I believe. Uh, so welcome. Welcome to both of those guys. If they are interested and they're watching right now, please know that uh, you have the ability to uh, the ability to have your members page uh, personalized. So, for example, here's mine. You click on it, and it opens up another page where you can have uh, different pictures or whatever you want uh, your information that you give us and we can post it. I think John has a better one than I do. Let's see, where is he? WB6 UBK. Uh, this one shows you how you can have pictures that rotate through. So, you know, if you have multiple pictures, we can just put them in an album like this and they'll rotate through. Uh, I think I updated Mike's not too long ago. Uh, a picture up there? Yeah, what was it you sent me, Mike? Do you remember? Uh, Hawaii Field Day. No, Shots. No, it was something after that, I remember. Where are you? <laughs> we'll see if it's there anyway. Maybe. Oh, the ancient picture from World Radio. Yeah. yeah, these are the ones from Hawaii. My hair was black. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hat. Is that what the original color was? Green. Was yeah. it black? 
Okay. That's great, but I've got three weeks. Oh, is that what you do? You, you do that uh, gray just for men? You, but you're doing the, the subtle one where you comb it through and it gets darker and darker, or lighter. <laughs> Purchase wisdom. Mm -hmm. I don't know whose it was. Somebody, uh, somebody sent me another picture, and I posted right. another picture for somebody. Maybe but, not a news or something. Yeah. Oh, you I know mean, what? I should have added that picture, the eight-year-old picture yeah. from the eighties. I should have put that in there. I'll see if I have it. But uh, in any case, so yeah, we have the members page. Welcome to the new members. Thank you for joining us. We do appreciate your, your uh, being a member. That's, that's important to us that we uh, keep our member growing. All right, so um, let's see, what's next here? Um, obviously, we still have merchandise for sale. Uh, we still have lots of t-shirts in stock in every size. Uh, so they make great Christmas gifts. Whatever you're thinking. Yeah. All right. Uh, just to be porous. Uh, did anybody hear of any swamp meets or anything? When's a winter field day? Maybe there's some information you want to share. Yeah, talking about winter field day. Yeah, we're looking out there. Yeah, I know Aaron as well. He's out there in the middle of the Folsom area doing his uh, QRP. It's not QRP. You're doing underwater, aren't you? So you're plugging into the uh, outlet for a power supply? I have a generator. Oh, you have a generator? Nice. And nobody's complained about it at the at the park. They like no no problem whatsoever. The rangers come and ask questions. If it's good. Oh, there's actually a ranger that comes by once in a while. Huh? Huh? Do you have to pay it in the parking lot there? Twelve dollars to enter the park. Now I think that that's probably included in the park pass that you can buy for fifty dollars a year. It's like one hundred and ten. Is it one hundred and ten now? So it was like 50 bucks when you checked it out, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are different levels. The one that you would need for this is 110 or 120 per year. Okay. Then uh, do, do me a favor. Find out uh, the information on that. Send it to me. And maybe the club will buy a pass. And then whoever's interested in using the pass. Is that for state parks or what? Yeah, we need state to find parks. out what uh, what's available. Because I, I think that... During the summer, I'd like to see more members get together in the park, and I know that it costs five dollars to park there. But if we carpool in, you know, five people, six people, because we don't generally have more than about five or six people, but uh, if we, if we park at McDonald's, yeah, park at McDonald's, somebody's car, yeah, I mean that nothing wrong with that. There you go. Well, Most year too young. listen, if you want to hide in the trunk, you're, I'll put you in the trunk if you want to hide in the trunk. But uh, no, uh, we could we could definitely carpool and, like you said, park at a McDonald's up the street and drive into the park, you know, and then we're paid for. And, uh, you know, if a member is brave enough to go out in 45 degree weather and sit at the park and operate, there's no reason we can't take the pass with them. As long as it comes back to the club, then I think that should be something that this club can pay for to have a little bit of... Uh, Sponsoring some activity for QRP work or working in the park. Okay, that's a good membership. Yeah, I mean, uh, does anybody think that's a good idea? I think it's great. I think it's yeah. a good idea. All right, Beals Point. Yes, that's where you're looking at. Yeah, so, uh, okay, so I'm going to put it down. Um, we do have to vote on it uh, as a quorum. <clears throat> we don't really have a quorum here, but I don't think this is going to be a vote that we'll have any issues passing. There could be some debate. Uh, only because it's over fifty dollars, the uh, board members can't decide on it Wait, themselves. You want to take that mm -hmm. On the other two, do they go on the PayPal or do they go on the oil card? For the uh, club dues, November. the last two dues were paid by PayPal. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, when uh, you sign up as a member or renew your dues, uh, that's something we need to talk about tonight. It's December. This is the last month, obviously, so we're about to start a new month, and that means that club dues are going to uh, come due for everybody except those who paid in the last uh, month or two because they are given they're given uh, their dues all the way through the 2019 year. So 
if you haven't already paid, you may want to jump over to the W6SFM page. And uh, one more time, we'll just take a look real quick here. Uh, and if we see, this one, we don't need that right now. Uh, if we look at this here, uh, if you go to uh, join W6SFM and you scroll up here, there's this application form. It explains to you that it's 20 a year and there's an asterisk and, uh, and it tells you that uh, that's for a new membership and, or a renewal and you just simply check the box or the bubble here that says renewal and then if you're an ARRL member or not and say next and then it just asks you for your information. If you're a club member already, you don't need to fill in all. You just give me your name and your call so I know that you're renewing. If you move, change your address or your email or your phone number, do put those things in because we want to know. But uh, otherwise, you know, we're just I'm just updating the uh, log for the uh, club anyway, so I don't really need all the information if nothing has changed, but I do need to know who you are. And then when you're done with that, if you would please uh, go here, if you want to pay by PayPal or credit card, just click here. It says pay by PayPal, but uh, you can use your credit card obviously with PayPal. And then um, just put in regular <coughs> membership. Clearly we have some uh, memberships that are prorated. And uh, this is what I was telling you, the November payments go all the way through next year. So those who uh, renewed or joined us in November, they've got uh, membership all the way through. I think we gave one in October because one of the Octobers was mid-October. Yeah. So, you know, close enough to November. And then uh, if there's two people in the family for family membership, we only charge $10 for the other person. <coughs> so you don't have to pay 40 for two people in the same family. And I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but... Uh, we only charge $10 for under 18 membership as well. We used to have it as free, but there's other stuff that's involved. And, uh, you know, those young people, they eat a lot, so. <laughs> what about 67? Yeah. There is no, um, there is no, that's, yeah, that's called regular membership. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you're uh, 65 or older, that's regular membership. Yeah, that's your normal membership. Yeah, so just add it to the card. You can kind of give a rate. You get over 70 or something. Yeah, sure. When you hit 90, senior 90, rate. 90 <laughs> I'll be senior rate. Yeah, just a 90, yeah. So uh, once you add it to the card, you can just click on the checkout button here. And then uh, if you've already created an account, by the way, you can log in with your account information. I think there's a place here that you can log in. Um, but in any case, you just simply click proceed to PayPal, and then uh, obviously it adds one dollar, and that's our processing fee, and that goes to PayPal, doesn't go to the club. So, in any case, uh, so we hope that you renew your membership online. That would be great. Appreciate it. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I went to renew my AWRL through the club. Yes. But the website does not offer. QEMs. Can you explain? I'm not familiar. It's another publication within the RL publication. It's a technical magazine publication. Do you get it with membership? Yeah. You can, when you renew your membership, it will take you three weeks to renew as well. So, turn so I wasn't able to renew with oh, the it's, it, So it's, at, it's either QSD or that? It, no, no, no. You get QSD automatically. It's okay. an additional like subscription. Yeah. You pay extra. Yeah. Oh, okay. Can you get QEX without having it? I don't believe so. Interesting. You know what? They don't seem to offer that to us. But let me make a note and uh, say, can we get QEX? So it's a magazine. Yeah. In fact, the past three years, I've just done a bank transfer to AWRL. Uh -huh. Every time you manage to lose it. Oh, so right. I was really hoping to just be able to. Oh, man. You know. So now I'm back to writing the check once a year. 
Yeah, they still don't let us pay uh, electronically either. It's it's bad. I mean, it's it's pretty ridiculous. Well, I mean, we're going in Maryland. We are having them. Yeah, I don't know what's up with them, but uh, it's definitely uh, not. After the other seven. Yeah, seven, right. <laughs> well, I'm not. No, from the new one, they go, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> So obviously, uh, what we're talking about here, Phil is mentioning the ARRL, and we have the ARRL membership application here, and uh, you just fill it out. And again, after you filled out your membership application for ARRL or renewal, and just I try. click and pay. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to talk to uh, I'm going to talk to the uh, the guys at the ARRL, and I'm going to see if I can get them to. And, well, there's uh, probably not a lot of guys in AQ yet. I've never even heard of it. You're the I first person. Well, I used to. Okay. Yeah, oh, I'm not saying that it, it's not uh, something people get. I'm just surprised because I haven't uh, seen it myself. So. Well, looking at the website right now, mm -hmm. you order it and you indicate if you're a member or not, and you get different rates. Yeah. Oh, oh really? Yeah, I think that's right. Right. But the rates are different? Yeah. Well, AR double L gets member rates. According to this, select these options. Mm -hmm. New subscriber or renewal. So it looks like it's offered to anyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just go and subscribe to it. It's bi monthly. But there's different rates for members uh, versus non members. Well, mm -hmm. it says ARRL member rates. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Subscriptions are for six issues a year. And you can get one, two, or three years. And you just put all your information in and do it. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so you can order it separately, is what you're saying? Yeah. And get the discount. If you're a member, they got member rates, yeah. Right. So then I guess you could renew through us and then take a second step if you're interested for the QDX. It doesn't look like it's offered as part of the AR as well. It looks like it's a separate subscription. Yeah. No. Yeah, I don't know personally. I'm not familiar. <clears throat> so uh, that's interesting. I have not heard of it myself. But um, if that's the case, then you'll be able to do that. You'll be able to renew your your ARRL through us and then shoot over the ARRL. And that could be paid electronically, right? Yeah. So you could just pay by credit card with like them and PayPal and or credit card with us. And make that big fat donation at the same time. Oh, all over. Yeah. All right. I'll put you down for not, not two, not three hundred fifty dollars donation. <laughs> Get it from Chris. He's right next to me. I can do that. I'll shake. You just down. got a big favorite. I'll shake him down. Oh, <laughs> that's true. We'll take it out of the hat. All right. Um, okay, so we've cl uh, covered the club dues. So yes, please. Pay those club dues if you would uh, this month. Uh, what happens is on January 30th, uh, if you haven't paid by that time, you get removed from the website. Your email forwarding dies, and you no longer receive the newsletter. And then uh, some of the guys in the club who are, will remain unnamed will go to your house and tear your antenna down. <laughs> but, we don't mention that. We just tell you they're going to throw bricks through, <coughs> bricks through your back window of your car. But, I uh, thought they put the grow lights in the backyard for you. Uh, <laughs> what, what, yeah. You know what? I'll tell you who does that for you. That's uh, Bob, NEA. He'll put the grow lights in the back of your backyard <laughs> because, uh, you know, he's uh, growing vegetables, so he probably wouldn't mind the real estate in your yard. Too. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, so... Uh, you will, if you don't pay by the 15th, I think you will start emailing people. We've had this discussion before. I'm not going to have a full discussion about it, but I will mention that I generally send an email out, and then uh, those who don't respond, I send an invoice to them. And I found that, uh, and like I said, I won't discuss it, but I found that 20. I mean, I won't have a conversation about it. I'm just going to let you know. Uh, I found that about 20 or 25% of this club 
takes no action in pain until I send an invoice, then they just pay the invoice. Well, you know, most people pay bills when they get them. That's right. They never think true. in terms of, I haven't seen a bill, I better pay this. That's exactly right. And it, it's a pain to manage that side of it. Yes, it is. Know? And I prefer not to do it. I prefer not to have to email everybody an invoice, because I have to individually send PayPal invoices to everybody. So I would prefer if people would actually pay on time, but uh, you know, I, I want to keep them as members, and a lot of them I know they want to maintain their membership, but they're not active members in the club. We have a lot of people who sponsor this club through their membership. You know, they like the bug roundup, they like what we're doing for ham radio, and they want to donate money, and they donate it in the form of membership. But when the new year comes, they never read the newsletter. They don't know anything about what's going on, and they hardly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough thing. Right. So when they see a W6SFM email, they may just automatically pass over it or trash it. But when they see a PayPal invoice, they pay it because they know what it's for. So yeah, even though some people in the club think it's controversial to uh, send invoices, I find that it's the preferred method for many of the members that are out of town. So it's just the way they like to pay. They want they don't want a reminder, they want an invoice. Typically they're not gonna think of it until that's right. Prompts. So I got one on my side. Exactly. No, nobody's uh, nobody's gonna be bothered. Uh, you'll get you'll get a maximum of two emails to remind you and then an invoice. And that's and then after that uh, last year, I think I cut out about five people, and uh, they did not. Uh, however, uh, three months later, two of them renewed. But it took three months, and I think it's because they realized the newsletter stopped coming. And three months later, they're like, "Hey, what happened to those newsletters?" So they decided to pay. And then I know one of them had financial problems. And Twenty dollars for some people is a lot. So. Uh, you know, they have to take their time to get to it. All right, so uh, that's really the club business. I don't think there's any swap meets. Uh, Chris, do you know when the... Uh, yeah, I don't know when you make March. Oh, for the... No, I mean for the uh, field day, the winter field day? I don't know when it is. Uh, 26, 27. Yeah, last week of uh, January. Oh, wait. Oh, last weekend of January. Yeah, 24 hours starts 11 o'clock. Oh, okay. Saturday and 11 o'clock Sunday our time. So you're going to drive Field, up? Fields Point Campground. Fields Point, yeah. Get the uh, group campground. What's a group campground cost? Fields Point. I, for a group, I don't know. Do they offer campgrounds there? Oh, oh yeah. Oh. They have actually kind of nice campgrounds. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I would uh, say if there is, you want to put something together, if you can find people to go with you, you know, all the better. I prefer not be out in the cold, but. There might be some people that'll join you. I mean, I might make a day trip, but I don't know that I'll spend the night. I missed. Is there a particular date or a particular? Yeah. 26, 27th of January. That's a Saturday, Sunday, and it starts at 11 o'clock. Okay. And what, what is the event? Winter Field Day. It is Winter Field Day. It's kind of like an independent outfit. The, the sponsors are. Yeah, ARRL the ARRL sponsors the. Field day, they the summer support time, it, but don't sponsor. But the winter field day is another group that uh, that sponsors that. It's event. similar rules as far as points. And yeah, I, I imagine if you go to uh, the, the web here. Yeah. Let's see. Here we go. So here's the uh, here's the web page for Winter Field Day that we're talking about, 26th, 27th, like Mike said, and you have to participate in this little shack here. So we have to get a shack. We have to get a shack. You have points if you're outdoors and cold versus indoor. I mean, literally, they have those classifications. Do they really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're in a, you know. What do they call it? Three hundred thousand dollar piece of country. That's not exactly the spirit. Misery Field Day. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, as long as I don't have anything going on, I wouldn't mind going for, you know, some of the day to uh, enjoy a little radioing in the cold. I have a jacket. I do own one. Yeah, but I can quiet. Exactly. I don't have any real long sleeve shirts, but I do have a jacket. It's usually not crowded in January. I can't do that. I imagine. So if you wanted to camp, certainly. Well, unfortunately, I will not be available. 
Oh. Sorry. All right. Well, no worries. I've been to Korean once. Uh, <laughs> so much for which you feel. Yeah. That's not a different. Good thinking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you know, you can't. Uh, but uh, we can, uh, maybe we'll mention it on the website just because. We can work at home, right? You can run the top bag. <clears throat> oh, yeah. That's true. I suppose I could do a uh, winter field day, you know. But if I'm around, like I said, I'll do it. Maybe if people want to come by, join me. Uh, let's see here. Um, once again, T-shirts. I've got them. Make great Christmas gifts. Um, okay, so... Yeah, right. Uh, let's talk a little about uh, Bug Roundup. Everybody knows we had Bug Roundup just uh, recently. First thing I'd like to show you, I don't have it on the computer. Why? I don't know, because I put it on the computer, but not this one, oddly enough. Oh, yeah. Although I could remote in and edit. So this schedule here, I'll pass it around. It's not, uh, <coughs> we can show it to the people at home. Let's see, I'll let you see it here we go. So uh, basically what this schedule is, is our schedule. If you worked in the field day, or not field day, the, uh, the bug roundup <coughs> operation, then you already have seen this. Does that look familiar to you? All right, so um, just focus here in case you still need to. All right, uh, so this is the uh, schedule for those who worked as W6SFM slash your zone, unless you were six. So N6IET, K5KV, K6LQ, myself, Chris, AI6U, WB6UBK, John, and K7SF, Steve in Oregon. Uh, we all operated as a W6SFM station, and we took uh, a schedule which was available. You could find it on our web page. Um, so, what was it? Oh, I uh, forgot to mention. I put this. Uh, I put this uh, announcement here for the FOC day, uh, which is like their bug roundup. Um, and also below it, I added this little blurb to the website about the bug roundup event. It was suggested to me by Benny that we. Uh, have a permanent announcement on the front page of our website since that's one of our big events and that's what ended up going up there just tells you about the bug roundup and it tells you if you click here on this thing that says here that it'll bring you there but um, in any case what it is is it's a way for people who know about the bug roundup heard about the bug roundup but they don't know how to navigate under club activities to the section that says bug roundup. Instead, they may be uh, looking for it on our home page. So <clears throat> Benny thought it would be best to keep it there permanently. And I, I agreed with him. So that announcement there will permanently stay up there. And then for more information, you just simply click on the click here or go up to the, uh, to the top of the page there. And as you see, it tells you all about the bug roundup. And we still have, of course, the registration form which uh, comes in very handy. Um, I'll get to that in a second. The uh, point that I was trying to make, obviously, when I interrupted myself, was this is the schedule. And for the first time, I'd like to uh, say thank you very much to those who took a shift, because unlike other years of the Bug Roundup, where it was me for two days and somebody else for two hours, uh, we had very good participation. Um, I'll pass it around, but uh, here for our opening evening of Friday 0 hundred through uh, 159, Rick took that schedule and then he also took the 0 200 to 0 400 schedule and then it was me from 8 p.m. till midnight and then we didn't really have a lot of overnight but we only missed four hours of overnight and then uh, Rick woke up and started operating at uh, 
Rick started operating at uh, 4 a.m. And he continued on Saturday until 8 a.m. Oh, no, I'm sorry, till 10 a.m. So he worked from 4 a.m. till 10 a.m. Yeah, it was a good long shift. And then uh, Benny came in at 10 a.m. our time and worked till, uh, till noon. And then it looks like uh, Mike did noon till 2. Thank you. And then I did 2 till 6 p.m. And then we had John come in from 6 to 10 p.m. Thank you. And then from 10 p.m. to 12 midnight was Chris. And then uh, Sunday we did miss from uh, midnight till 4 a.m. when Rick came back in at 4 a.m., worked till 6 a.m., uh, gave him a break so Benny could work 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. our time. Uh, he's two hours ahead. And then uh, Rick came back again at 8 a.m., worked till 10. <clears throat> I worked 10 to noon. John worked noon to two. Oh, too. Yeah, you were. And then you, oh no, I'm sorry. Uh, Steve came in yeah. noon to two. Uh, and then, yeah, Chris did the into yeah. the overnight. You did the into the overnight on Sunday, on Saturday, rather. And then uh, John closed us out from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. on the uh, final day, Sunday. So uh, just so you can see it with your own eyes. Uh, I'm going to toss that towards you, Dennis, right behind your jacket again. And uh, you can see that we had some really great participation. So thank you to those who participated in the uh, bug roundup. I'd like to see it where there's 20 names or 10 names on there and even more people operating a two-hour shift. Um, were you out of town, Dave, or what was that? You just... I was probably... Good, good for you. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Listen, uh, if you're going to sleep, I'm going to give you a pass. Because I would love to sleep myself. If you can't no, see, there's right. like black circles under my eyes I noticed today. And I thought, wow, I should sleep. So, no, actually, I take it back. You were in I don't think I had my rainbow back. Oh, right, okay. But you still had your bug. But I think I got it back in that weekend. <laughs> Works well, better than connection. Yeah. Already, you know, he has chaos. All right, no excuse. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No, seriously, I hooked everything up, and I was Sunday morning. I was on the the uh, what do you call it? I was on the internet, whatever the contact sheet thing is. On the oh, okay. Internet. Yeah. I was I was making comments on the internet. Oh, okay. The bug round, so and you were in the bug round. I was, in that sense, I was participating. It's good enough for me. Yeah. In any case, uh, so my point is next year, if we can, or not, yeah, it would be next year. Um, next year, if we can, it would be great to have even more people signed up on that sheet and we can have a more two hour schedules for people so that uh, everybody has a chance to operate. Um, we picked up some members that are, I think we picked up at least one member who is East Coast, or I mentioned to somebody who was in the bug roundup and he, and I said to him, join the club and you know, you can be a W6S FM station. I'd really like to see like an eight or a nine. That would be really nice because they can get all the way into Europe and uh, I think that'd be helpful. So, okay, uh, the next thing that I mentioned uh, when I showed you the join now or join the uh, registration for the bug roundup was I mentioned that we have, uh, we have uh, people signing that up, and I know for some people that was controversial, and I changed it from a mandatory sign up as we agreed to a <coughs> registration so that we could email people. And that was what the whole purpose of it was anyway. We just wanted to be able to have a record of people who were going to be in the event so that we could contact them again and let them know. Um, that, that still wasn't free well? It did. Uh, we had, um, glad you asked, we had, I have no idea because I don't know why I didn't write it down, but uh, we had, uh, I believe, a hundred something sign up. Now, not all of them were new. I thought I wrote it down somewhere. I guess I didn't. 
Excuse me one second here. Let's see. Uh, well, I can count one, two, three, four. No, it was about 100. I think it was 110, actually. So we had 110 people register for the event. Obviously, uh, some of them were not uh, first-time operators, although I did see a lot of uh, new operators. One of the questions that we asked is, is this your first time? And I can see on this first two pages, all but one is uh, first time. So... Uh, we had quite a few. Now, if you go to the Bug Roundup website uh, and you and you look uh, at this page here for the Bug Roundup, um, what you'll notice here is that there's this little spinny globe. I don't know how many people have noticed it. This shows a pin for uh, everywhere that people are looking at us from in the world. So wherever there's a pin is where people were. Interesting enough, um, let me see if I can zoom in on that. So what period of time did that load? This is all time to the Bug Roundup page, but I didn't start it until the, uh, until the end of the last Bug Roundup. So this is, actually no, this includes the last Bug Roundup and this Bug Roundup. <coughs> But you'll see here, um, for some reason, oh, uh, okay, so one of our viewers is Elk Grove. But uh, you can see that there's just that hole right here, isn't there? And in the Rockies, there's some missing spots here. But really good coverage across the United States and uh, Canada, East Coast. And then if you look down here, we've gone into Mexico and, uh, was that Cuba? And then, uh, you know, all of South America has been <coughs> doing the uh, event. And in addition to that part of the world, if we go over to Africa here, you'll see in South Africa we have viewers or people who have come to check out Bug Roundup. Uh, Northern Africa, uh, Morocco, uh, this person here is floating on an island in the middle of the uh, Atlantic. And then as we move up here, you know, you've got, uh, like I said, in Northern Africa, and all of Europe is just lit up like Christmas tree, Iceland and uh, Greenland, Italy, it's just covered, uh, the UK is covered, you know, so we're getting really good coverage, and here's Russia going across Russia, and, uh, you know, so we, we are pretty global, let's just put it that way, we, we have global coverage of the of the planet when it comes to the bug roundup there well i don't know i didn't look at Antarctica. let's see i'm going to guess no though no unfortunately nobody in antarctica that's a pretty deep graphic yeah uh yeah you know let's check australia yep we have uh four people <coughs> four Places in uh, looks like uh, Queensland, uh, Melbourne area, Sydney, and uh, uh, what's it called? I forget the south. Those are people who registered. No, these are people who have looked at the bug round oh. page. <clears throat> There's New Zealand, the Northern Island in New Zealand. Nobody in the Southern Island of New Zealand went to the bug roundup page. And then of course we're going to have Japan and, and uh, Hawaii. That area. <laughs> so how did you get their position? Did you ask them to use a No, uh, it's a it's a geolocator based on IP address. Okay. So <clears throat> we can see when they come to the web page, just like right now. Uh, if I refresh this web page, you'll see our flag come up saying that we are live <clears throat> on the website right now. It's reporting as Elk Grove because it's probably going through a VPN uh, that's located in Elk Grove. But it's close enough to Sacramento that we can see that, you know, that's who we are. So anybody who happens to be on this page right now would show up. Uh, if you're not already aware, there's the spotting aid page, which is uh, the live chat window. 
I still haven't cleared it out, so if you want to go see some of the comments and the spotting in there, there's lots of comments. And uh, there's another globe here, uh, and anybody who happens to be looking at this, this is not the same as the, uh, this is not the same as the Bug Roundup page, rather this is only for the chat window. So these are people who came to the chat window, whether they spoke or not, I can't say, but they were at least watching the chat. And uh, they may have just been looking for people spotting themselves. There's that guy floating out in the middle of the uh, Atlantic Ocean there. Uh, you know, not a lot of coverage in Europe there, but they're there. A lot of, you know, the United States and some of uh, the Caribbean looks like they were there. Uh, looks like we have some South America that were there. Uh, let's see, African, you know, there's some European stuff here. I don't see Italy, but uh, a lot, some UK. And uh, let's see if Australia is in there. Yeah, we got uh, one person there in Australia. I don't see anybody in New Zealand checking it out. But again, this is just the Bug Roundup page. So if they came to look at the spots, so this spotting, this spotting page, even though they're not, there may not be a lot of people chatting on it, there are people from all around the world who are coming there to see people spot themselves because they want to they wanna find us. So this is why I emphasize for those who are W6SFM station. That's why I ask you guys to go in and spot yourself here. And you can see here's, uh, here's somebody for the club as SFMARC spotting themselves. Uh, on 40 meters. Okay, um, we do that so that these people who are just looking loose, they can find us. Now, if you go to the home page, the home page shows you another map or another globe, and this globe here is anybody who's on the W6SFM page, and these are everybody who has ever come to our home page. And as you can see, we have a little bit more coverage uh, in the world for there's Australia. And, where we had four people in the Bug Roundup page, we just peppered Australia for the Bug Roundup page, and I imagine we have nobody, still nobody in here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, no, that's the same thing. Right there, that's <laughs> All right. What, what are those eight? Listen, yeah. it's all the same thing. That was not. Yeah. That was yeah. Australia. Yeah. There it is. There it is. Close. There's New Zealand, two in New Zealand, where we had nothing on the Bug Roundup page. Uh, so you know we're yeah. we're we're getting out pretty well here. Look at there's the North Pole. How about that? Are you okay with the North Pole? Yeah, yeah. There's Santa's your, getting busy up there. And there, yeah, he is. He checked in too. I saw his IP the other day. So uh, here's, I mean, look at this. Europe is just peppered. Africa, Morocco, South Africa. I mean, it's they're here. So we're getting good coverage. The U.S. obviously is still got that hole right down the middle there. That's from one of the least populated parts of the country. Too. Uh, yeah, that's true, but they could still come. Uh, we've obviously got Alaska. There might be one or two in Alaska there. Uh, Japan, clearly we're getting all of Japan, China, the Philippines. I mean, so we're, the club is a global club. It's global. People are definitely uh, seeing us around the world. So that's why I asked you to check in. Uh, now for the information, 100 people registered to the event. Uh, I'll get the exact number, but I believe it was about, uh, uh, I believe it was about 110 people. And we had 372 unique visits to the Bug Roundup page for this event. Yeah, uh, no, I think, uh, a year ago, we had 512, but this year for this particular event, 372, and these are not, these are not 500, or this is not 372 people. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah, not hits. This is 372 individual IP addresses. So if you revisit, it doesn't recount you again. You have to be a unique IP address. Now, if you're on a cell phone, I suppose in your driving around, you might be issued a new IP address, so you could know. I wouldn't think so. Maybe. Okay. I thought that could be the case. Otherwise, you'd probably have to 
Oh yeah, I guess that's true. You wouldn't be reconnected if this, you'd have to remain in the same IP for that session anyway. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Good point. So yeah. So 372 people came to the bug roundup page. 110 approximately registered for it, and uh, we had plenty of people obviously uh, in the event. Uh, and once again, like I've mentioned in the past, and again, the reason I want people to register is some of these people we wouldn't even know they were out there if we didn't uh, ask them to register. So if I look here at the registration list, I see that we have a YC1JCD from Indonesia who registered for the event. Uh, we have a KP3 in Puerto Rico. Um, Let's see, uh, so we have a G3 coming in from Suffolk, uh, United Kingdom. Uh, GI0 in from Northern Ireland. Uh, VE3 from uh, Ontario. Uh, let's see here. Uh, DJ Zero in uh, Schleswig Holstein, Germany. Uh, let's see. Uh, another Indonesian, another YC1. Uh, we've got, let's see, VA1 in Halifax, Canada. VE3 in Ontario, yeah. AL7 uh, from Alaska, right? That's uh, John in Eagle River. He's a member. Did you have an earthquake there? Did, oh, that's right. It was a big earthquake. I should have emailed and asked if everything was okay. So that gives you an idea that, you know, we have people that are operating all around the world. And then also uh, we have people who are operating in the event that don't register for the event. I wish they would, but they don't. So here's someone, for example, um, who sent me their logs, and I believe it was somebody in England, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's optional, of course, to send the log, but it's nice when people do. So, okay. Uh, Here's Stow Upland, UK, and uh, this is Chris in the UK, and Chris is reporting in, uh, looks like Chris is reporting in with a few on his log. He reports conversation with Nigel in Heathrow, London. He reports in talking to uh, Alan in Toulouse, France. Toulouse. And reports in uh, Marco in Gothenburg. I guess that's going to be, uh, it's an SA6. So where's SA? Sweden. Sweden. Okay. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, Sweden. Yeah. 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 So, you know, here's an example of England, France, Germany, and Sweden all having QSOs in the bug roundup and yet we never got any registration from any of those people. But I know they're in the bug roundup because they were using the Blue Racer, the 1922 original, uh, a, a GHD bug, and a Lightning Deluxe. So he even reported what their bugs were. So clearly these people were in the bug roundup. They didn't register, but they operated. And we had an entire operation a bug roundup event going on in Europe that none of us ever heard. So are they using their own calls then? They're not using the bug call. No, no. These are. He's not a member. He's not operating as W6SFM. Right. He just turned his log in. Right. And so let me ask you this here. I would never really understood this. Are we the only one doing the bug roundup on that weekend? Yes. The bug roundup is our event. We okay. hosted it. Yeah, invented we invented it and we hosted it. So there is no other bug roundup. Wow, we should get a whole lot more coverage. Well, um, 
you saw on the map that yeah. we have the entire world. That's starting to really take off. Right? We could it's put it's some really people on the moon to so get well, into no, the I mean, The social media outlets. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, nobody knows about it. Oh, no. Twitter. Oh, no. Uh, well, I get Lester Holt to focus in on the news. Sure. If you'd like to do that, you can. <laughs> this is big. Uh, we <clears throat> actually do announcements, mm -hmm. and I do announcements all around the world. I announce in Italy. Yeah, I that's announce. Out some of these guys don't know that's a lot of it. Yeah. I mean, uh, I announce in Italy, in Germany. I announce in uh, Argentina, Brazil. Mexico, uh, I announce on the K3, or rather the Elecraft uh, bu Bulletin. So uh, that's global because anybody who owns an Elecraft radio, I announce in the K3 group, I announce in the KX group. <coughs> so the entire world is seeing the announcement. Now, the only people who are gonna see this announcement are those who are reading these bulletin boards. So if you're not a member of some sort of amateur radio bulletin board, you won't see an announcement. We do announce in the ARRL, um, but for some reason I got a bunch of people emailing me saying that I, we were not in the contest list on the ARRL, which I thought was a little bit odd, because I know I signed up for it. Are you still in the letter? Yeah, it's supposed to be... Right. It's supposed to be in the uh, in the uh, emails that come, but I did see it on the website. You saw it on the website. You know what? Maybe that's the only place, and we're not getting into the emails. You know, I think Eric had a point about this QSO today. You'd be a great guy to interview for QSO today because that's exactly. I don't know, you did an amazing job. I'm not as good as you. So, but I appreciate the compliments. <laughs> I think we go a long way. Uh, we certainly could. I mean, uh, when it comes to the time for the bug roundup, I mean, I can certainly talk to that. I think Mike would do a good job on that, too. Um, so I did receive Mike, some. Like said. Yeah, help you. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll sign Mike up on that. All in favor? Okay. <laughs> Let's get to the good stuff. Wait, okay. I, I, I just got an idea. So yeah. How hard would it be to have like a leg to spotting network that you just uh, you just log yourself in when you call on CQ? So how many times you call CQ? Pick a time, time, any time of the day, and you're on here. There might be somebody else on 20 meters or something. If there was one place you could just look to see, uh, oh, you mean a spotting? Well, see how your reg tours are calling CQ on our website. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, yeah, but that's yeah, true. Yeah, first call, was there. Um, I think he's looking for something central to our club <clears throat> so that members and people can come and check out. You know, a, a spotting, not DX, but just rag to rag to it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can look into it. It means that I have to find a application that would provide that kind of hmm. constant updating, because you don't want these spots to be older than you know oh, you had to thirty yeah, minutes or something. Yeah. Right. Because after thirty minutes, that person may not even be there anymore. So. What do you for DX spotting network stuff? Uh, that might work. Well, they build their own stuff. I don't even uh, I'm sure. So I have to find an application that would run within our website that could auto refresh. I mean, not just for club members, but anybody that's. Oh yeah, I have to direct you. No, that's a that's a suggestion. I'll uh, look on there. Down. Down. Yeah, there's somebody up 20 meters. See if I can hear him. You can always talk to JM. That's the crit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure, but it's like I have to know only 40 there. meters in the daytime. Though. We don't keep you on me ask them a conversation. I don't like anybody stuff on there, but there's nobody out there. People on there, but nobody yeah. coming back. Well, I wrote it down here, Rack Chewing Spotting Page. So I'll uh I'll but let you, you just make it a real simple thing where you just go to I don't know, R C at W6SFM or whatever. Yeah. And or whatever it would be. And, and 
and say, call yeah, it would be a, it would be a frequency. page just like uh, the website is now. You would have a page, and it would have to be a pull down. Yeah. You know, it would be under activities maybe, and you could just click on rag chew or spotting, I or I could put it on the side. So call on CQ for an hour and on. Yeah, I yeah. think the uh, State Heat Club has a page like that. Do on they? The I don't think so. Hmm. You go on there and you can see. Yeah, there is. I've seen it. I've never used it, but I've it's an it. actual spotting. It's page? an active. Yeah, people are on there. It's like a chat. And so, it, which is just like we had here for the bug round, I mean, you could, like what I do, I just said, hey, where is everybody? You know, I wrote that. Because so they also wrote yeah. from the concert so all the time. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, so, okay. Maybe that's why. Yeah, maybe it's already invented then. <coughs> They're doing it. People write on there, and they just, you know, a lot of times people are even just chatting on there, to be honest. Right. They don't say where they're at. Let's you know. see here. Do you know where? Yeah, I'm... I don't know, but you'll find it in there. I, I believe you. We'll just go through those lists. And maybe it's already them. done. Yeah. One of those tabs will take you to some page that'll have them talking. Uh, let's see. If you see. Chris, they probably don't like anybody. Well, they have the groups page. page. Oh. They have the groups page, and the groups page is not, you know, that's like their bulletin board. But are you saying this is a live? Yeah, somewhere in through there, somehow I found it. I, I couldn't tell you how I did it, no. Because hmm. I've never seen it on the SKCC. I was, just kind of, I was kind of <laughs> checking out these different pages one time, and I discovered it. I go, oh, that's interesting. And you have to actually, you have to like log, you have to be logged in or something. Yeah. So you have to be logged in, and then you can go to this group or chat. I mean, I see all the blogs. <coughs> I see the group form. Is it the group? No, that's help. No, I, I've never seen it. If you find it, let me know. But it shouldn't be so hidden. Do you remember? Maybe it's from memory. Kind of yeah. drill down. Page doesn't have really to log in, as I recall. <coughs> is there even a login? I was able to get in there. I don't think there is there a login. I guess there. For this particular page, I think you had to. Is I don't even know they have a login. Just like you do with this other thing we do with the bug roundup, you can't just go in there. You have to, you know, you have to log in. Yeah, but I've never even seen a login. SKCC skimmer. There you go. There you uh, go. Is that on this list? Did I pass over? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like it on <laughs> is it on that? Is it on that list? Skimmer, what you're looking at? On their page. SKCC Skimmer 4.6. Program that helps find stations you have not yet worked in order to achieve your SKCC award. Yeah, it's not on their page, the word skimmer. So, um, but that's just for the purpose of <coughs> exchanging numbers. Yeah, yeah. some of those guys are right. all I want to do. Well, we can certainly look into the uh, possibility of doing that and uh, having the uh, that page that you're talking about, Rag Chewers check-in page. So um, let me just cap this off. I know I want to hear from Phil because he brought something for show and tell, and I know you guys probably want to uh, stuff a candy in your mouth by opening the box for me. Uh, so the club, uh, the reason I ask you to send your logs in when you work as W6SFM, uh, anybody who operated as W6SFM, I'm sure that you received an email from me asking you to turn your logs in. It's because uh, I take these logs and I put them, I come compact them into a single log, and we get QSL cards. People who uh, people who work the club station often want to hear. Yeah. Uh, they often want to. They often want to uh, get a club QSL card. So they send in their QSL to us, and uh, the issue that I have, of course, is I don't have any of the information if I didn't work them myself. That's W six S F M. So if, uh, in this case, this person here, they were Rick. But there's no information here other than it just says, Rick, thanks for the QSO. But 
if they don't put Rick's name on there, I'd have no idea who they're, you know, who they've talked to. So in this case, I see that's KE7MRT. And if I look at your log here, I see that Rick spoke to KE7MRT on 40 meters. He was a 5'7", and that was Dave in Tucson. And their QSO was at 0.30 hour. So, so uh, with that, I can fill in the QSL information for the club QSL card and return this person a QSL, which I did. Thank you. Um, and if you haven't already seen the club's QSL card, let me just hold it up for the people at home first. That's the club QSL card, and then card. Yeah, it, I think it is actually. I think it came out nicely. You want me to pass it around, or you? Yes, please. Sure. So, uh, yeah, that gets filled out. But without the information that you give me in the log, I can't even give him a report back. So that invalidates the QSL if he doesn't get his report. So uh, it's very important that you guys turn those logs in so that when people send QSLs, I have the information to provide them with on the, uh, on the card. The N6 and A Club, River City Arcs, got a QSL card. I got the mail. In 2013, Japan, a guy wanted to return to his own. He can't find any record of any conversation five years ago. <coughs> yeah, I think it's all the same. Yeah, yeah it's, I think they're probably all the same. Um, so, looking at this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Give me a second. I wasn't quite as prepared. So it looks like the club made about 55 QSOs as W6SFM in that 48 hour period. Not bad, you know? You got 24. You got 24 by yourself? Yeah. Uh, actually, you, I have you at 15, I think. Or Some of them on 160 meters, also. <laughs> yeah, John's got nine. Mike has nine. Uh, Rick has 15. You know what? I have to find Denny's. Yeah, Denny sent me one. <coughs> oh, here we go. Uh, I think Denny did the most. 20, uh, oh, Chris did 24. So I, I'm way off because Chris has 24 by himself. Um, I did not break Friday night. I was planning to come in and come in and leave. I got, I'm not trying to figure out how to do it though. Yeah, I got. I think I know what the problem is now. That's all right. I printed yours out. That's gonna change now. I'm gonna move the computer. So. No, send the ADIF like you did. It's fine. I can convert it. So. Uh, did you ever get mine figured out? I did. So, that's uh, thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. Oh, you know what? I never got a log from uh, K7SF, so I still need Steve to send me a log. <coughs> Uh, but yeah, there's well over 60 contacts here, and that, and I still have miss. I'm missing two logs still. So when is the next round? It's uh, the third week of May and November. Yeah. yeah. So we have a, a a very good total of QSOs made by W6SFM. So, uh, yeah, that's why I ask you for these logs, because I really need you to send them to me so when people QSL, I have the information to give them a proper confirmation. And then I also received this here, which was kind of cute. Uh, that's uh, Gary's little, what is it, WN6U or 9U. Uh, he, he's got that unique 
Vibraplex uh, uh, modific modified bug. Vertiplex. The Vertiplex, I think it's called. Vertiplex is what they call it. Yeah, Vertiplex. And then uh, this one here, I think it's a it's a Go Devil uh, Boldy but Goody bug. <clears throat> so that's what came in from Gary. That was nice of him to send that. I'll pass this around. You can see that Vertiplex. So basically what it is, is uh, in this case, it's a blue racer from 45. Uh, WA9TGT, Donnie, he uh, strips them down, builds the side plates, and puts them in a, in a vertical position like the wire chief. Uh, now I don't know that it operates like a wire chief. Uh, you can throw a five more of them, you can a wire chief. I have two wire chiefs, so I've got a 20 and a 21, <coughs> and uh, they're really horrible keys. <laughs> That's why they stopped making them. Well, what the wire chief did like is they quit using them. Yeah, I can. I completely understand why. Yeah. Uh, there's not a, because they put the paddle here, and there's not enough torque to get it over uh, for a good swing. Like, you know, when you hit the, when you hit the dit, it just moves nice and smoothly. But if you take that and you put it vertically, uh, if you don't put the arm at the very bottom, you know, you don't have as much torque. <clears throat> so they put it at the 1920 was up here. So you barely had anything to move as far as pivoting goes. And then on the 21, they put it down towards the bottom and it was much better, but it still wasn't quite as good as it could be. Uh, and then, but the Vertiplex, I'm interested to try it. You may recognize there's another key, the Viz key. The Viz key made a, a vertical like that. As a matter of fact, I just saw one uh, very low serial number sell on eBay, or it's for sale on eBay. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, selling at like 60 or 80 bucks. Let's see, Let's see if I can find it. They call it this key. Just a key or a picture of it? Well, it's a. Oh, the one that it, it was just a picture that Gary sent in a paper, uh, uh, email and I printed it out. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so they didn't mark it. Well, let me see. Maybe I have to say uh, completed, completed auctions. It may have already sold. Let's see. Let's go farther down here, here, completed items. Let me switch this so that people at home can see what I'm doing. Uh, so, uh, completed items. Let's see what's here. Oh, you know what? Gosh darn it. Yeah, I saw it was like 80 bucks, but. Uh, they're still being made. The Vizki, if I'm not mistaken, is still uh, is still in production. It's a new owner now. He took it over. Uh, Curtis took it over for Tom. And there it is. That's the Vizki version. Interesting though, in this picture, either he's changed the design or it doesn't really show it very well because the uh, Vizki has like almost like a diamond plate look to it where it's got this like have you're familiar with the diamond plate metal it it's has a service or something yeah uh, yeah it's like back of pickup trucks and stuff like that used to diamond plate so uh, the Vizki, the base of the Vizki had that diamond plate look to it. It was like a very reflective diamond plate. It looks like now, just from this picture, it would appear that it's uh, just a flat plate now. <coughs> and that's probably because uh, I don't think Curtis is building these full time. I think he's, he's got a day job and he's trying to just keep the company alive. Uh, He's trying to keep the company alive is what's going on. And he's doing a fantastic job, but I believe he's just super busy. So maybe he took a little uh, a little change in how he makes the key. But in that picture that I had seen, oh, maybe if I search above. 
uh, in that picture that I saw, it was very obvious that diamond plate look. And, and I remember seeing that it was Smallest. relatively Smallest. inexpensive too, which I was thinking, think, uh, I was thinking what a, I'd almost consider getting it. Of course, I don't know, there it is. So it went for $182, which is not bad. Oh, I know why I didn't buy it. It was a left-handed bug. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I don't want to. Okay. Which is interesting because I'm left-handed but I use a right hand key. So here's the pictures of it. And you can see, like I was saying, it has a very pronounced, almost like a diamond plating, or I don't know if he's buffed that in or, or if he scribes it out or what he's doing to it. But you see that, what I'm talking about, that pattern. <clears throat> so um, yeah, and this one here was uh, serial number 60. So clearly it was a pretty low serial number. But that's the original idea. And then um, for those who didn't see it good enough, let's see if we can find a picture of the vertiplex. Not that it would be on eBay, I imagine. Uh, is there a spelling? Oh, did that come back? It did. Vertiplex. V-R-T-A. I spelled it right. Maybe it needs a hyphen. Yeah, I'm sure it's not overly uh, popular just because it's handcrafted. But uh, it's pretty nice looking. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a good idea. I just like to see how it works. I've heard really good things about the, uh, I've heard really good things about the uh, Vizky. You have, okay. So, in any case, I uh, thought that was kind of interesting. All right. So, thank you for sending your logs in. I'll compile that information uh, for the uh, for the web or the newsletter so that we'll see how many individuals logged in or checked in, how many registered, where they were from. And maybe if I have the time, I'll put a list together of those who registered, how many were in what state. You know, that way we have a little bit of statistics, so maybe I can do that. So with this last 15 minutes, uh, first let me thank Mike for bringing in chocolates, I think. I haven't opened it. Thank you for bringing snacks. Sorry I didn't have the water tonight. Um, I thought I just got here a little too late, I think. All right, and then uh, I'll hand it over to uh, Phil. He brought his uh, new toy, which is the uh, vector analyzer made by, what is it, Funk? Mm -hmm. Funk Amateur. Funk Amateur. And uh, basically what this is, is it would be, I guess you could consider it competition for the rig expert type analyzers. And uh, he's actually got one in the box there, so. Go ahead and uh, I'll pass this around so you can thumb through it, and then uh, if you would, Phil, let us uh, let's hear some information on it. Um, this is a brand new product. Um, I placed an order for this about six weeks ago, and it took almost a month to get. Uh, currently, they're they're on order batch number seven, and they just finished filming. Order batch number four. These things are apparently selling faster than they can make them. But it's good from 10 kilohertz to 600 megahertz, which is pretty unusual with one of these antenna analyzers. Full blown vector network analyzer. It's a monochromatic display. You can monitor up to five bands simultaneously. You know, if you're doing like a trap dipole. Track vertical, and you want to make sure all of them as you change one, see how it impacts the others. Uh, you can actually do remote open short load calibration. So at the end of your transmission line, you just take uh, your calibration standards. These calibration standards are 
this case it's a BNC connector. This is the open standard. This is the short standard. Somewhere in here I've got the road. But what that does is it tells the analyzer what a true 50 ohm load looks like at the end of the coax, what a dead short looks like, and what an open looks like. And so what you do is you'll actually measure the true impedance to both the resistive component and the reactive component at the antenna while you're a distance away with the analyzer, which is a pretty important thing if you're trying to design matching networks and things of that sort. And along with that, then you can use this um, with the software for the for the big fancy DG8 SAQ, which is a full blown dual port vector network analyzer. With that, you can do uh, time delay reflectometer stuff, which is how you measure faults and transmission lines, a bunch of other features. So I'll pass this around so you guys can take a look at it. It's under two hundred bucks. Whoa. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's a great price. The uh, the uh, rig expert analyzer that would be comparable to that. Uh, it's a little pricier. It's a little. It's a lot pricier. Like nine hundred. Right? No, no. Uh, it's five hundred fifty nine dollars uh, compared to this hundred and ninety dollars. Oh, yeah, uh, it uses a true UHF N connector. Uh, comes with some features like uh, a SO239 adapter for end connector, and uh, it has a time domain reflectometer built onto it as a color TFT screen, um, and it, it's also a, net, a single port vector network analyzer. But for the price, this is this is a really uh, this is a really great. And the accuracies, um, Cam, the, this market has changed so dramatically. Two years ago, you couldn't think of getting into UHF with anything other than like that MFJ259, right. which was analog. And that's 350 or something? What's that? That's like $350 or so? I, I don't know. I've, I've never mm -hmm. really actually been around one of them. But, I mean, I, I, I think the, the this market's is all, changed. Yeah, this is also much thinner. I mean, uh, here's an example. Here's the mouse for this computer, and we hold the mouse side Two by side. Two double A's will run up to 40 hours. Wow. Yeah, so it's clearly very thin. It's uh, Now, what you didn't mention was you had to construct it. Well, it's sold as a kit. And as I recall, there's like 12 connections you have to solder. You put the BNC connector on it, the three push buttons, the on-off switch, and then there's a couple of connections on the display that you have to solder. But other than that, about an hour's time to put it together. But that's done to get around value added tax in Europe. If it's sold as a kit, it's much different. The tax rate is much different than if it's sold as a complete electronic. And where's it come out? Germany. The ship, this, this one actually came out of England. The design's German. The, the distributor is a company called SDR Kits. Oh, the manual has the German address on the back. Yeah. July 13, 2018. The designer for this one and actually that DG8 SIQ are both the Germans. Um, pretty savvy guys. I, I was absolutely blown away by that. Oh, and it's also got an audible device, so as you're tuning your antenna, you can listen to the tone go up and down so you get the lowest SWR, which I thought was kind of a neat little feature, too. And it looks like it, it displays inductance or capacitance on the screen, so you can see uh, what the actual capacitance Have you tried connecting the capacitor to it and seeing if you can? Yes. <clears throat> And what was the result of that? Was it accurate? Oh, it's spot on. Um, the reactance components, of course, are, are done in there. You can also measure things instead of uh, SWR, you can measure absolute return loss as well. <coughs> he's, he's done his homework. Yeah. It's not quite as intuitive as the, as the uh, rig expert, just from playing with it. Yeah, it's, it's a little different, you know, they, they all have their little idiosyncrasies. Sure. But you can adjust the sweep however wide you want it. Um, 
all the standard stuff. But again, the price points that make it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, big price. Yeah, I think there's, this there's is. There's nothing else on it. I'll be honest. I would say <coughs> this is going to be something that is more for a more technical person. Right. Well, I know who is it? The race to lose it. They don't want the dual court. Yeah. Yeah, this one here is just throw it over. It's very <laughs> nice, uh, but it, it seems to be <laughs> nice. It has a it's got a learning curve. It seems to have a, a pretty decent learning curve on it. So um not Sorry, probably didn't have a lot of documentation. Uh, no, it has a nice manual that came with it. Uh, that I don't know how many pages it is, but it looked like it had to be pretty thorough. Yeah, it looked like it was. Pretty thorough, and it was written in English. Oh, wow. 37 pages. <laughs> well, you know, some of these companies. Including yeah. the assembly instructions. The assembly instructions are about the first seven or eight pages. Yeah, first eight pages. Yeah. And it looked like, like I was saying, you had to put the display, solder the display on. And that sort of thing. But yeah, it's a nice uh, it's a nice alternative to those who may not be able to afford a rig expert analyzer. Um, and it's got the USB connection on it, so you can use it with the computer. Yeah, it's designed so if there's any firmware upgrades you can download. It's got the bootloader built in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what about software updates? Do they have they come out with anything, or is there? There have been changes since that. That one's version, I think, one point seven. But again, you just uh, plug USB, it into your yeah. laptop and download it. Is there a flash tool? That's, is there currently a flash tool for it yet to do the update? I think it's built in. Also, oh, it came with those uh, the open load short. Oh yeah, comes with a set of calibration oh, standards. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, you'll probably need to redo it again after it goes around the resume. <laughs> now what, a process. Process. what frequency do they uh, suggest that you do the OSL on it? Oh you you it runs a whole gamut, it runs from ten kilohertz to six hundred, but one master sweep and that stays resident in the device. However, when you do whatever antenna you're working on at the end of the piece of feed line, you just tell it what range you wish to yeah, calibrate the 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 and, and it only retains that for that particular session. You turn oh. it off, that calibration is oh, So you don't have to have worry it. about recalibrating. Then, it then it just goes right back to the, I see. To the standard. I see. Okay. Looks like there's a 108 software update here. I'll have to jump on it. <laughs> yeah, they have them both 107 and 8 listed, so it probably came out with 107. <coughs> and then, um, so you need to calibrate it to each piece of coax. You Every antenna analyzer is exactly that. Hmm. The instant you put a piece of transmission line on your antenna analyzer, if you're, you're not to, reading yeah. the true impedance. If you're going to avoid the coax as part of the measurement, if you don't need to read the antenna from the feed point. You don't have to climb your tower and, and USB. do an OSL, you know, for every measurement. See, the SWR only changes relative to how much loss is in the coax. But the actual impedance of your antenna varies with the feed line that's between your analyzer and the antenna. <clears throat> the transmission line is actually a transformer. Every antenna analyzer, every network analyzer, they all have that same issue. You cannot read the true antenna impedance unless it's a perfect resistance because the transmission line impacts that. Yeah. In fact, I could, if, if you want to, sometime we could do that. Show, oh, uh, put the coax back. and see what the difference is between the coax on and off. Back and forth. It, it's absolutely mind boggling. I've got a couple of test pieces of the coax. I put a standard on there. And, and if you tune the antenna off of 
resonance point off the true resistive impedance, you'll see that an antenna that's actually too short in some cases reads as if it's too long. And if it's too long, it may read that it's too short. So if you don't do that open short load calibration at the end of coax, you have no idea what you're looking at. Yeah. Uh, well, it's not always practical, of course, because you've got... That's absolutely you know, true. You can't but, climb, you're not going to climb your tower every time you need to take a measurement of your antenna. You so what, I, what I've done with my antennas is with, this, with the DNA that I use, I mark each piece of coax with a calibration standard, and I've got it in my laptop. So I'm using stamp lab calibration one or two or three or four or five. Oh, so you so can if I ever want to go back and look at it, I just call up the calibration. It's in the okay. file, and it's all done. Uh, oh, in the software? Yes, in yeah. my laptop. Right. Okay. So you check in each coax once. Right. Yeah. yeah. I just do it once when I first put it in. Call I ever want to look at it again, I yeah. just... The rig expert software allows you to do that as well. You can save calibrations and then apply them to the measurements that you make, and it will deduct that reactance from the from the uh, <coughs> measurement itself. Uh, it, you can it also is, do it in the analyzer right. too. But you're there, telling me that, that when you do that, though, you overwrite on the model that you have. If you do it in the within the analyzer, it will. If you do it in the software, it will not. It's like it's like if you do an OSL in your software. And yes. Not overwrite what's in there. Yes. Yeah, because what's happening is you're doing an OSL on the computer, but it's reading it through the analyzer and it's storing the information into the computer. So yeah, you would be able to do that, but um, I think. I think that the uh, there's two different softwares at play here. Uh, the software he's talking about is usually used with this dual port vector analyzer. Um, I would think that you might even be able to use that with the rig expert analyzer as well, although I've never tried it. It may be able to read it. So you can do it. Yeah, it depends. Um, also, the Antscope software that Rig Expert uses is open source code. So if you really wanted to get in there and start manipulating the code, you could do that too. <clears throat> you know, you'd have an opportunity to program your needs into it. Uh, but yeah, on the 600 through the 1400, when you do recalculate an OSL on the analyzer, it stays in the analyzer. There is no going back to the factory yeah. default. Uh, Whereas on the Zoom models, when you do an OSL, there's an F button and a top and an OK, and you can or two number two, and you can toggle between the saved calibration from the manufacturer and the OSL calibration. And again, it's only for one piece of coax because, like uh, like Phil said, every coax is going to be different. So it would be silly. I had somebody call me the other day, and they wanted to do an OSL on their coax uh, and then I told them if you do that then you better use that same coax on every antenna you have because yeah. otherwise it's you're not going to be uh, getting proper readings so um, in any case it sounds like a great analyzer I mean the price is right like I said it seems like it's a little more for a more advanced user knowing the people who buy the rig experts as well as I do I would say that that would be a a, a challenge for many of them, I would think so. yeah. but it, it it certainly looks like it does a good you know would do a good yeah job. I was I was pretty impressed yeah you know you are a little more technical than many of the rig expert users so <laughs> you know, I think you're well you know that little A eighty thirty I have yeah is remarkably accurate oh it is that's a great little box. yeah it is. It well, is. I'm going to have it, so could the SWR and other stuff for them? Which is yeah, cool. and that's true. Uh, that's what we were discussing before you guys came in. Is uh, you know, I get people calling me on the phone, and they just want to know what their SWRs are. So, uh, you know, th that's the kind of operator. But Do they keep a spare jar to keep their SWRs? <laughs> All of them. All of them. They have SWRs, and they need to check them. So, uh, yeah, my point is. The use of the rig expert seems very 
intuitive. Just you pick it up and you can push a few buttons and you already know where you need to go and what, what you're seeing. Um, that one there is very menu driven. So other than the fact that it's more menu driven, I think the information is probably <coughs> just as good. Sure. Um, it's a different interface. Yeah. Little less colorful. But listen, I've got a K3 and I know what an orange green and a monochrome line looks like and I've lived with it for eight years and, I'm, and they work pretty well. Yeah, I'm yeah. quite happy with my radio. So I don't need any color TFT screen on my radio to, to uh I could do it with a dead screen. <laughs> you know what? You're unique in that way that you're willing yeah. to tolerate a uh, radio with no screen at all. That's right. I can call my icon friend, you know, I'll buy one or two. Right. The only thing I don't get is, I mean, you touch the LCD and see what frequency you're on. I don't understand how you read it. Is that when you're, do you feel the heat from where, which LCDs are lit up? Is that how you do it? I think it's intuition. How do you actually, Rob, how do you do your, uh, with my box? Your box yeah, reads the radio. I guess it, yeah, Ellicraft has. Yeah, I got guys using, a lot of guys using 7300, 7610, 7100s. Oh, so it's compatible with across all of the radios. Oh, yeah. Is it reading the cat information? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And then yours, Chris, you have a, a reader on your. You have the voice, right. It's all done, voice, and the estimator, and a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Power. Actually, it is, but it doesn't do much. Yeah, well, it's not real time. I assume that when you push the button and it reads to you the information, that's probably pretty accurate. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, there is your radio also. The, what do you have, 71 or 7300? It has the reader on it. Yeah, it does too. It reads all the menus. The radio goes through that. Oh, it'll actually read you the menu. Oh, yeah, And you're, you can do that through the cap. Your program does that through the cap. The, yeah, menu. Okay. Right. Well, excellent. All right. Is there anything else from anybody? You want to mention something before we go? Oh, I think, yes, we do need to mention something. Uh, this is uh, rather important, I think I should add that uh, we have the uh, North American CUSO party. Yeah. Sorry, I was fra uh, forgetful there, as everybody knows, I have my 10 minute memory. Uh, the North American CUSO party contest, uh, can you tell me the date on that, Chris? That's a no. January 12th. January 12th, thank you. <laughs> so January 12th, um, it sounds like we will have one meeting before the actual event, but we asked for volunteers for a QTH uh, where we could operate in the event and it's 12 hours and it's 12 hours is what we do, yep, yeah, 10 to 10 uh, and Bob says that he will host it at his home QTH, yes Bob? Okay. That's not far. Listen, anybody who joined us for uh, Mark's place in uh, Lake of the Pines knows that where you live is a close drive. Lake of the Pines is what it is. Because I titled it somewhat reliable directions to my house. Oh, did you so print out the directions for those? I would encourage everybody here to join us for the uh, event. It's only 12 hours. It's 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. You could show up any time in between. But really, you know, it's nice to have everybody out there. The club will have donuts uh, in the morning. We'll either have a afternoon lunch and or a uh, evening dinner of some sort to Here, keep us. Eyes and lobster. That's what Bob is game for. Yeah. Bob, you're going to buy ribeyes for everybody? Sure. Can we each have our own ribeye steak? It's the same weekend as classes. No, I we, we each want it. All right, so we'll get you the total number of yeah. people coming out so you can buy those ribeyes. Yeah. All right. Uh, lobster, too, or just ribeye? I can't eat lobster. No lobster? Okay, sorry. Um, no, uh, the club will provide the club will provide soda, and uh, because we're at uh, someone's home, there'll be uh, probably coffee, I imagine and uh, water, uh, but the club will get a 24-pack of soda 
and that'll be available all day. Uh, if you come and you can bring some snacks, that'd be nice to share, you know, a bag of chips or something. But uh, we'll definitely have donuts in the morning, and then we'll have uh, we'll have some sort of lunch and or dinner in the evening, so you guys aren't sitting there hungry for 12 hours. And uh, it should be pretty fun. Bob, why don't you tell us what your setup is? Oh, okay. I have a uh, Elcraft K3 radio, which will run barefoot because the contest is hot. A lot of high power. Uh, I've got a Step IR DD18 antenna on a 70 foot tower. And got anything on 80? I have an 80 meter dive bar. There you go. Cool. So, and you're running the Elecraft K3. Correct. What kind of microphone do we have? Oh, yeah. Whatever, whatever you bring, <laughs> buddy. Don't forget to buy it. Yeah, Bob doesn't own any stinking microphones. So, yeah, uh, remember, we'll we'll say this again at the January meeting, but uh, do keep in mind you want to bring your your favorite key with you, and that radio takes quarter-inch input, so uh, bring yourself some. I have, a, I have a input for both. Uh, Three and a half mil. Key and, key oh, right. and, and Yeah, um, there are two inputs on the K3, one for a paddle and one for a straight key. They're both quarter inch. Um, I'm sure if we have some alligator clips, we can clip you up. If you just want to, you know, clip from one key to another, that's fine too. They both have the Roger D5. They both have the Roger D5. You've installed that just yeah. for you, Mike. Uh, if you push one side of the key, it gives you a uh, beep, beep, beep. And, an echo. And, if you, and if you push on the other side of the key, it goes beep, beep, beep. So those are your Roger beeps. Some people call it CW. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll have one meeting before that. Uh, but thank you to Bob for offering us your QTH. And uh, we'll mention that, of course, uh, in the newsletter. And hopefully we'll have 40, 50 people crowded into your house. You said he can't wait to clean the shack. <laughs> You yeah. weren't supposed to say that. Oh, yeah. right. No worries. All right. Well, thank you all for coming. Thank Appreciate you. you being Bye. here. Bye. And uh, uh, also to the people that are on, uh, four people watching live, we appreciate you taking the time out to watch us. And, uh, and we'll also discuss the t-shirts that might be uh, on our next meeting as well. And uh, you with us so until next month, or until the uh, Tuesday night net, appreciate you being here, and we will talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.